welcome to Loving Truth. Our study finds us in the little epistle of 1 John at the back end of the New Testament, and we are reading in chapter 2. Now, let me mention something that I'm sure is familiar to you in your past history, something called a pop quiz. Remember those? I can remember being in eighth grade social study class, and I had a teacher by the name of Mr. McMeans, emphasis on the mean. He, he was, a, I'm sure, a good man, but uh, he did not play any games with students like myself who weren't interested in studying. So he'd say, take out a half sheet of paper, and he would quiz you on the homework assignment uh, given the previous day. Well, because I didn't study and I didn't invest any time in really doing the homework, the test revealed my great ignorance and my lack of preparation. Tests have a way not of making you, but of revealing you. And it's interesting when you go through 1 John that there are several pop quizzes. They're moral quizzes, sometimes doctrinal quizzes. Quizzing our belief, that's doctrine, and quizzing our behavior, a moral quiz. And that's what we have here in verse 3. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, we know that we have come to know him. Here's a proof, an indicator. If we keep his commandments, there it is. If we do what he tells us to do, we don't earn his love. He gives that love to us freely. It's unconditional. But this is how we know that we know him, that we truly love him. We love him so much we want to do what he says. Verse 4, whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. That's exactly what was said in chapter 1, being repeated again for emphasis in chapter 2. It's not the person who professes love. It's the person who demonstrates love. True love for God is expressed not by sentimental language, but by moral obedience, by our simple submission to the truth of God. And so this becomes a proof. The false claim of verse 4, a person saying, I know him, when that person walks in darkness, not in the light, is seen by so many people. In fact, the word pseudo comes from the Greek that talks about a person who is something other than what they claim to be. They are liars liars. If we love the truth, then we need to be honest about ourselves. The truth is in us when we agree with what God says about us. Verse 5, if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. It is evident. It is growing. It's not perfect, but it's on display. It's sincere. And this is how we know that we are in him. If you compare that with verse 3, we know that we have come to know him. And verse 5, this is how we know that we are in him. All of that speaking about this wonderful relationship of fellowship with God based on the death of Christ and the forgiveness of our sins. We're placed in Christ and we are walking with Christ. That is, we've come to know him on a more personal and intimate level. And that's the way our lives should be lived. It's interesting. It says in verse 5, this is how we know that we are in him. This is how that we know we've come to know him. So that when we make the claim, I know him, it is authentic. In Matthew chapter 7, at the final judgment, there will be people who talk about all that they did for God, and God's response will be, I never knew you. Not that he wasn't aware of their existence. He created them, but he never knew them in a salvific, a salvation relationship like we're talking about here. This is how we know that we're in him, and this is how we know that we know him. So verse 6 is kind of a conclusion. Whoever claims to live in Jesus must live as Jesus did. That's pretty simple. 
We don't earn our salvation by living that way. We prove that we're really saved by a desire to live just like Jesus lived. I hope that's the passion of your heart today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your love has been proven to us. In Romans, it says God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Your love is clearly proven, but our love to you is on shaky ground often. And the way we demonstrate our love to you is by following what you desire, the commands of your word. We love your truth because we love you. And I pray, Lord, that we will live our lives in such a way that our claim to know you will be given evidence by the way we live. Everyone who claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Father, thank you for your love to us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.